Hello and welcome to another exciting video tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to set up cameras and plan out your shots. Let's get started. Okay, so the first part of making a short film is, you know, once you got your storyboard sort of figured out, which we've got in this particular scene of this, um, of this short film, we've got our grease pencil storyboards here. Um, so you can see how these are like rough ideas of individual shots and how I want to tell the story for my short film. The next step is to begin to block out this action in actual 3D space. And this is a really fun step where you begin to take the ideas of the boards and translate them into an actual space. Um, now this official process is called layout and this is what I do for a job. So it's nice to share it with you. All right, so there we go. Let's come over to scene three. So I'm gonna reference my boards and think about how um, I can Im imitate the shots. Now I've got my boards in an edit that's living inside my Blender scene and I'm actually gonna create a little viewport for myself. I'll maybe come over a little bit right here and I'm gonna set up, I've got a video sequencer and I'm gonna go for the preview. Um, let's see, actually sequencer and preview. I'm gonna get rid of that and I'll give myself a little timeline here so I can easily have some playhead controls. And I'm going to go scene and I'll grab hallway boards scene and shift S that will put this strip here. So this is actually a scene. I've, seen, I've got another scene here in my drop down. So are all my scenes. And then this other scene is the uh, storyboards. So I like to reference my boards. I like to have my boards up somewhere so I can look at them while I'm thinking about, you know, how I'm going to do these shots. So I can see here that we start off with this launch and I want to get a shot here, actually kind of an extra shot where I really see the droids walking back and they're really tired. Okay. And they're like worn out. So I don't need to capture all that animation yet, but I just need to get a sense of what that pose is going to look like. I need to think about what are the key poses and how do I frame the shot? So that's a big part of what layout is. You're always defining key poses for the animators to work with. And then you're also defining the angles, the lensing and the cinematography of the shot. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna grab my first camera and I'm gonna shift right click right here to get my 3D cursor just right here. And I'm gonna select the camera and then shift S selection to cursor that will just quickly snap this guy here. I'm gonna to switch to global so I can move around on the global transform. Then I'm gonna split my view here now this one, I can actually jump into my camera. I'm going to define all the action around this area. This is where the doors are. And in this story, the little droid's just gone down into this trash dump area and he's escaped. And this part, he's about to fly out of this trap door. So what this door does is it opens like this and he's gonna come flying out. And I want him to crash into these guys. So if you have a look at the actual um, boards here, you can see he flies out and smashes into them. And then they all look at him like, whoa, where'd you come from? So I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna rough it out. I'm gonna think about the idea, the main idea of this shot. So the main idea is really of this first shot. I want it to be showing how tired these robots are. So now I'm gonna rotate his master controller around 180. Grab Y, I'm gonna push him back in space a bit. And I need to get a really tired looking pose. So let's think about how would we embody a tired robot? Probably like he's gonna be um, gonna be down like this, maybe tilted to one side, like uh, maybe one one leg back a bit. Give him a bit of a limp. And instead of looking up, kind of have him looking down like he's really, really defeated. And spread his leg out a little bit. The storyboard, we've got like this kind of design like this, right? Um, where we've got the door where he's going to come out and then we see the guys. It'd be nice to try and combo that. I wonder if we could do that. Let's think about it. If we take this angle, we could bring them forward and just give it a beat where we can really see them all walking back. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think I need to see down the hallway. Let me go ahead and push my clipping uh, distance out a little bit. And I'll just clip the things that are close to camera so we can get inside that wall a little bit without um, 
So this shot can literally kind of be about setting up his re-entry into the scene and the gang as they come back. I feel like within the shot, they kind of need to like go to here. Now the door is open, right? Let me think about this. Because he falls in, it stays open the whole time. Which is kind of weird, I guess, but something like this could be cool. All right, now I'm gonna now that I've kind of got a framing that's interesting with the right ideas, I'm gonna try my lenses. I'm just gonna see if I can't make more of a meal of these guys. I'll come in a bit, maybe pull back some. Take my clip start up to two. And um this will just compress the space a bit more and allow me to um, feature these guys a bit better. Take this camera and I'm going to control B to bind it to my timeline right here. And I want to make sure I get a good amount of time of seeing these guys come in. So let me block their action out. I'll just ignore my boards for a minute and I will think about take it to 80 seconds. Is that two, four, six? Yeah, it's about four seconds. Yeah, that feels right. So at this point, maybe my camera will have panned over a little bit more. Maybe track back like this. Like we kind of make a little bit more of a deal of the door. Well, something like this. We're framed a bit too low for the action. So I do want to go out of pose mode, go back to my main camera here and switch to local. So I'm panning and tilting in the local orientation for the camera. And I'm going to R and X just to kind of tilt up a little bit there. Make sure I frame them well, getting a little bit of cut through on the side there from our uh, clip start. I feel like they're moving a bit too fast to be tired. So I will grab the workers. Also want to make sure I think what I'll do is I'll box select the keys for these droids. I'll right click interpolation linear to make it linear and then I'll B to box shifts shift B and then hold down shift and then deselect that first key. I'm gonna make sure I've got this one grabbed just for these guys and I'll bring it out a little bit until we feel like the speed makes sense. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Feels good. That reminds me of the previous scene. That's what we want. So now he's gonna come in. Come in like this and hit these guys. So now it's gonna be tricky not having this feel like a flash frame. And seeing this makes me think maybe I'm gonna have that problem with this angle. But one thing that we are gonna have happen is the camera's gonna pan. So as he comes in, maybe a couple frames in, one, two, three, four. So maybe right here, the um, camera operator starts to react. So I'm gonna select my camera. I'm using Shift B, it's a hot key that I've set up for myself, by the way, with select active camera. You can right click and add shortcuts. So I set a shortcut for that. And now let's grab the camera. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, set a keyframe. So I'll just hit I and I for the location rotation. And I'm going to come forward there. And in local, I'm going to rotate on the Y and come around. Let's say, okay, now we're running to this problem where we're seeing the side here. Uh, this, I think, because well, they're going to kind of crash and tumble down a bit. So we'll set that like this. Okay, so now we need to solve this. I can keep pushing my clipping plane, but I don't know if that's going to give us what we want. Let me just push it out. We'll try. Sometimes you can get lucky with the clipping plane, but sometimes it just causes too many other problems and you have to move your camera. So it's okay. He's not getting clipped. Nothing else looks to be clipped. I think maybe we're all right. All right, I don't think this is going to work. I don't think this is going to work as well as I thought it was. And this is a classic example of storyboards. You know, having a function 
and they achieve that function they work, then when you get it into 3D space, it stops um, functioning. And part of it is this is moving so quick, right? But when you look at the boards, I'm just seeing still moments. Like he holds like that for a few frames and then he holds like that for a few frames. So you really get to read the action. Here, it's pretty quick. We might need to readjust the camera and I can, uh, yeah, we're getting clipping issues here. Okay, so I don't think this camera is being, is very successful for us, but that's okay. Let's keep blocking this action out real quick. So he's gonna come up, boom, and then let's just get, maybe we'll get a final post right here. So when you're going through this process, you know, you might often come into situations like this where you can see that the board worked, right, in a particular way, but part of why it works because of these still hold frames, right? Where there's, where it's just like a moment in time that's held. And then you see the next moment. It's just easier to read. Sometimes when you see that emotion, it begins to fall apart. Um, the other thing is the, you know, the idea behind the shot makes sense, but then the way it's being executed breaks down because the information that's important is not super clear, right? So, Let's think about how we can adjust this camera. I feel like the blocking, like if we just look at the top down view, like the blocking makes sense and is pretty good. The timing might be a little off. We've got to bear in mind our frames per second are, is pretty low there. Yeah, I feel like the animation will work within that amount of time that we've allocated. So these poses may not work and the way the animation plays out needs more, but the gist within that, within that block of time, I think feels right. Um, so maybe we'll keep this camera and I'll shift D I'll click the camera and shift D to get a new one. I'll go back to the beginning and with this new camera, I'll make sure we're looking through it by clicking on the green camera icon and then I'll come down here and control B actually you just have to select it and hit control B. That's all you need to do. Now with this new camera, I'm going to come here and think about maybe coming up or maybe let's make the shot all about what, what, you know, what it needs to be about, which is the door. You know, like maybe we need to see this. Like, how does it play out? Let's get rid of the keys on this camera. Yeah. Maybe that's kind of funny. That was interesting. Like, yeah, there's some comedy here to be had. The walking. It's kind of funny, like going off, off camera, and then they're gonna turn. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, that's good. Happy accidents. <sighs> Love it. Let's come back maybe a little bit further. Center up, maybe on the hallway a little bit better. Although it is nice favoring the door. We want to make sure we see a plenty of him. Um, let's try punching in a bit. A bit closer, maybe a 65. Yeah, I feel like the tighter we are, the funnier it gets. I might try that. Let's try this. All right, so I'm going to set key here. Location, rotation. Back. Um, and then as they come close, the camera's going to do a bit of a tilt. So I think I might like up till this point, come down a little bit. King back on. So like panning down and then when that comes, let's react to it. So let's come over here. Da, 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 da. Just a little bit like the camera guy's like, what? I feel like this is good. There's a lot we can do to refine the animation, not only the camera, but the characters as well. But in terms of a rough blocking pass to kind of figure it out, this is a good solution. And I'm really happy with it. I think this works way better than the original angle, even though the original was cool and neat, you know, but I feel like as far as storytelling goes, this one's communicating a lot clearer. That's a big part of learning and development is knowing how far you can push something. So I hope watching me push this stuff is helpful and that you're able to learn uh, more about this process. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got any questions about today's tutorial, hit me up and please consider joining over on the Patreon. Now, if you join on Patreon, you can get the project files. This project file right here will be available on Patreon. So this scene with these characters and uh, as I'm working through it. So if you want to join at the second tier and up, you can get access to that. Plus, you can also get access to the full uncut version 
of this tutorial, which is about an hour and a little bit long, like hour and 20 minutes, something like that, hour and 10. Um, and it's a full, me just uncut going through everything and animating this and putting it together. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to get a lot more, head over there, or you can join on YouTube and find it there too, if, at the um, All Access Pass level on YouTube um, for memberships. So join up. Thanks so much to everyone who supports this channel already through Patreon and YouTube. And thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. You're amazing. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have a great week. See ya.